So how would you define rape culture? Rape culture is the environment that we live in that perpetuates this era of like patriarchy. And some things related to rape culture are super subtle that have just been ingrained in us from the time that we were children. Mm -hmm. And some are very blatant. Rape culture is the system of beliefs that allow victims of interpersonal violence to be blamed for it. Mm -hmm. So like Sleeping Beauty is another one where he, and Snow White, he literally kisses her without consent. And you're teaching people like that's romantic for people to like just do things to you while you're sleeping. I'm watching, re-watching the show Sex Ed on Netflix. And Maeve, one of the main characters, is called a cockbiter. But throughout the first season, you learn that that was actually a situation where she was assaulted. Um, but that's still the nickname, and in some situations, the only name that's assigned to her. Um, I feel like it's probably been the most prominent, like in seventies or eighties movies, such as like Animal House. Maybe um, there's just a lot of casual jokes about sexual assault. In Animal House, they make a joke about having sex with someone while unconscious. It normalizes blaming people for something that happens to them. Mm -hmm. But if a bird poops on you, are you going to get blamed for that? It's the bird that pooped on you. You didn't jump up and ask the bird to. Like that's people's reference when it comes to what consent looks like. That's what healthy communication looks like, mm -hmm. especially because that's not really taught in elementary schools, middle schools, high schools. They're not teaching you about consent and healthy communication. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's what people refer to, is what they see around them. I'm inclined to say yes, as long as it's not presented like it has been before, in terms of people joking about it or becoming like a funny topic in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like you can, present on that topic in a way that's respectful to people who have been had those experiences. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it is important to tell the people's stories. I think it depends. Okay. I think it can be, can, it can be done right, mm -hmm. and then it can be did terribly wrong. Right. So a lot of movies do it terribly wrong. Where, so Game of Thrones was a really popular one where they use Sansa's sexual assault to be like, it, it made me grow up. And it's like, there's so many other things in your life that caused you to grow outside of this, but that's what they chose to focus on. Mm -hmm. Not the best way to do it. Whereas other shows such as like Unbelievable, which actually tells a true story, it shows support for survivors. It shows like post-traumatic stress. Like it shows so many things that are so real, like real life. They're not using it to be like, all right, now they're a new person because this sexual assault happened. So there, I think there's different ways that it can be portrayed and it depends on how it's portrayed. Mm -hmm. I don't think like pictures and video of assault mm -hmm. should be in film. Mm -hmm. um, it reminds me of um, suicide contagion. Mm -hmm. If you describe and show how to assault someone, right. I feel like that shows people that are already considering assaulting someone or that already think it's okay it normalizes that behavior and it says here's how you do this here's a step-by-step -step guide so in film i think consulting experts mm -hmm. before film producers just make whatever they want because they're not they don't constantly do research they're not talking to survivors they're not doing that kind of stuff they just sort of like this is what I've seen before, so I'm just gonna keep going with it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's similar to like how mental health and suicide ideations portrayed, like the producers are supposed to talk to suicide prevention experts mm -hmm. to make sure information is being portrayed correctly. They don't always do that, but that's out there. Mm -hmm. The same thing could be applied to sexual assault and rape. There are experts in that community who work with survivors and educate large populations but are they talking to those people before they just show it? Mm -hmm. And probably causing more harm to people than necessary. 
I would only put it in your movie if it has a purpose in the movie, if it's has more than just a plot device or more than just an emotional reaction. I think it affects us subtly for a lot of people where we may say something offhanded because we've heard it in TV or media and not even realize that it's harmful. Because we have images in media that normalize assault, that carries over. Any subliminal message has an impact. And when something like rape culture that happens every day in everything basically that we see, it grows into a bigger problem. I do think any time that they do portray rape or sexual assault, they need to have that hope and resiliency piece included in it. So like this terrible thing happened, that does not define who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. So that like it gets better, that there's hope, there's people here who love and support you, who care about you. A lot of times that piece is missing. Mm -hmm. um, and that shows, when you include that piece, it shows other survivors who may not have ever come forward that like there is hope, you're gonna be okay, mm -hmm. and that there's people who care about you.